Hello everyone, Icecool Tech here. Now, Apple has just released iOS 15.2 to the general public, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look to see if you should update your iPhone 7 or not. Now, if you currently have an iPhone that is experiencing battery drain or overheating, you should consider hitting that subscribe button with notifications enabled because it has been almost proven that doing so reduces battery drain and overheating. Don't believe it? Try it for yourself. Alrighty, so per usual, I will start off with overall performance. So taking a look at overall performance, I've noticed a very slight increase in the speed of the device since updating to 15.2 from 15.1. This is usually normal. It's usually at the 0.2 updates where we will see a last slight performance boost. In this case, it's nothing game changing, but it is there. I thought I'd mention it. Uh, next up, we have the animations. Animations I've had no problems with since updating to actually any release of iOS 15. Uh, here and there, you'll get the occasional slight stutter, but with a device this old, it's more or less expected, and it's nothing that will impact your regular use. For the most part, animations are really smooth. And of course, RAM management. In this case, it's been the exact same as iOS 15.1. I've noticed no change at all, so the amount of reloads you were having before, you will likely have the same amount after. I, again, I've experienced nothing different in that area. Alright, so I like to keep things as honest as possible here. So my maximum capacity on this iPhone 7 is currently 89% and it is supporting normal peak performance. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, I would like to let you all know that I have noticed a slight drain with iOS 15.2, but do not let that frighten you. The battery life overall has been a noticeable improvement over every other release of iOS 15 that I've tested on this iPhone 7. And that's a good thing because those releases did not have the best battery life ever. 15.2, while it does have a slight drain, is nowhere near the worst I've ever seen, and it's actually not bad at all. This phone has been at 75% for a while now, and off camera I've actually been using it. I'm impressed with this release so far. Now, standby drain, I cannot say the same for. I've noticed a drain of about 20 to 23% overnight. The first night was 23, and then ever since then, it's been just around 20% that is not good that's up there with the worst i've seen it so i'll give you guys that heads up now in regards to overheating i've noticed absolutely no overheating for once even right after updating this iphone 7 i haven't noticed the device getting extremely warm or anything you know you get the normal warmness the very slight uh temperature change but in nothing you know like we saw with ios 13 and ios 14 this has been really good so I will also mention too that this is not a one size fits all or in this case one operating system on one iPhone model fits every user type of thing. Just because I'm having really good battery life and no overheating does not mean that it will be the same for you. Uh, others, other users may have really good battery life, others may not. That's just how this works. On top of that, I should also uh, mention that the device has to go through a process called indexing, which in layman's terms after updating is a process where the file system is just performing a ton of background processes. This will last for at most roughly three days. I've never seen it go any longer than that. To be honest, I rarely ever see it take someone that long, but it can happen. This will use CPU power. It will drain your battery a little bit and it will may cause overheating. Don't be alarmed by this, it's completely normal behavior, just give it some time and you should be good to go. And now it's time to address our main question of should you update? My answer is yes if you're on iOS 15.0 or later, and no if you're on 14.8.1 or earlier. And here's why. So 15.0 and later, you're really not going to have any worse of an experience by updating. If anything, you'll have some more features, you'll have some nice new bug fixes and enhancements. It will be a more ironed out experience for you. If you're on iOS 14.8.1 or earlier, the opposite will be true. It will be a buggy, buggier experience. You might run into more problems. I would stay where you are until a few more iOS uh, releases come out where the operating system will be more ironed out, more stable. Then you should be good to go. And of course, if you do subscribe with notifications enabled, you will find out when that update does release, where it is time to update. All right, everyone, that is all I have for today's video. And if you do have any questions or you'd just like to say hi, make sure to leave a comment down below. Other than that, I will see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching.